So there is only one place that Rockscapes has been that can boast that they had our father do a project, me run a project, and Patrick run a project. I'm talking about Science North, and today we're bringing the next generation to see it. Right? Yeah. Yes. Team. Yeah. Going in. If you're from anywhere in Ontario, I would probably guess that your school possibly went on a field trip to Science North. And I remember going on as a kid when my mom was an educator and I went with her class a couple times as well as my own. And with her class, it was pretty special to me because it was actually an overnight educational camp. And that's where it began for me with how important Science North was to the community and to the province. It's not just about us building, but it was a lot of fun to come back after the fact and then put my own stamp on it and help out. Sean and I and my father have all led major projects there. Whether it's completely redoing and creating the very first beaver habitat, which my father did, to the new beaver habitat that my brother did, to a couple alterations that I ended up doing, to new aquariums that I created. And I got the pleasure to work not only for my brother, but then for myself. It was a lot of fun. The staff there are incredible. One of my favorite places to ever work or visit. And I always just have a blast anytime I get to go there. One of the first parts of this was that my father built the original beaver habitat. I cathartically ripped his out and then put my own beaver in there and then Patrick, when he was working on some of the other uh, aquariums and terrariums, he was designing a new beaver. So the very cool part was that we got to actually utilize some of the beaver logs that were part of that original build and a uh, limestone wall that we still had molds of, so we were able to replicate and continue in the porcupine area. The next time we came was actually, we came with Preston, myself, and Sean leading the charge, and we got to build a whole new level three habitats for snapping turtles, blanding turtles, painted turtles. Uh, we got to pay for bullfrogs, for the beaver, the habitat, the skunk, the flying squirrels, owls. It was an absolutely incredible project that uh, we built under Cubic and that we had such a great time there. There are some major renovations happening here on the third floor and you can actually see behind me we are remodeling, redoing the beaver habitat. And it'll be a nicer, bigger habitat for the beaver. He'll have a bit more space to, to, to swim. And also hopefully visitors will be, will have a better chance to see him. It was so interesting when designing the beaver habitat because we, we got a little bit more room to play, obviously a lot of surface area. And up till that point, I was working in some of the bigger aquariums and uh, we were finishing the inside. And a lot of the time finishing the inside meant getting inside. And uh, of course, anytime that we do that, which happens all the time, there's a lot of jokes cracked at our expense and that we're the ones on exhibit as the third, the floor above us, the fourth floor, was completely active. So there was a lot of people watching us work. I think looking down, there is a point where when you're going into the educational room, you look down and you can see the, uh, the beaver and the porcupine exhibits. And the beaver, I spent a lot of time playing and making look like mud and wood and all the things like the root systems uh, were all going through. And uh, I remember looking down and seeing the beaver interacting with the exhibit and they were interacting in the way that it was intended, which uh, is just always really cool to see. With the beaver and the porcupine, that's where we first used, I call it the tree stand idea, where we did the, the base of a tree, it made it look like the base of a tree, but it was actually where we could slide in real trees so that the animal could engage and then when they ruin that tree, they'll just swap it out. I used that same theory when we were doing the lemur exhibit. That one was just a little bit more where each branch 
acted that way, but that's where it inspired it all. So it's really neat to take experiences and evolve. We're always evolving, just like the Science Center. I'm evolving as an artist. So this is where things start and I get to bring them to you and show you where it all begins. So I'm Amy Henson, I am the senior scientist here at Science North on our exhibit floors and a longtime biologist right here in the northern ecosystem space here on the third floor of the Science Center. So I was very lucky to be hands-on on this project when we first opened it about 14 years ago. And we've always had live animals here at Science North, but we always wanted to create a more environmental and a more engaging space where people could come and see these animals and have a test that look like what they might look like in the wild if you were to go visit them there. Our number one goal is always about conservation of species and to really engage people with those animals in an up-close, intimate kind of environment that allows that space for visitors to really understand those animals. This renovation that we did was really important in that. And one of the really great things that I've noticed from people um, when they come to visit the Science Center here now is that they really get that experience where they get to see the trees that those animals might live in, they might see the type of rock and the real exact type of rock that we might find in Northern Ontario um, around their habitat. But what's best is they get that up close experience with them and really gets to see their natural behavior and how they might behave in the wild. I remember when the paper came out and that was the first time that I think that from a rockscapes perspective that I found myself in the paper and they were asking us to show them the molds. They were asking to talk a little bit about the process. So we showed them a little bit about that, especially on the trees. It was the very first time that I ever made the front page of a newspaper. And I was so proud. I plastered all over my social medias and I put this piece up thinking, how amazing. And the title was Sudbury Star, Groper uh, roaming the streets. And then I think the other one was like masked man uh, doing drugs or something. And then with the fold and the crease of the newspaper, underside was Science North gets revitalized with new habitats and that we were building everything. I was so proud that I didn't even notice that my picture <laughs> and the groper uh, or masked man was right there with it. So all my friends were asking, was I the groper or was I the masked man? And it, was, it was a lot of fun, it was an absolute laugh uh, that we still get to laugh to to this day. Now when I was working on the snapping turtle in particular, uh, that's where I learned that I had a new fear to unlock. So there was only a few inches underneath the snapping turtle and picture this large aquarium full of water, weighs thousands of pounds. Uh, I went under to just do a leak check and make sure that everything looked good. And my brother, of course, being the supportive fellow that he is, he's outside uh, taking a picture and helping shove me into this hole. And he took a picture with just my boots hanging out. But essentially it was so dark in there and there was just a small hole that I had a headlamp on and I sort of shimmied my way in there. And then I, I turned the headlamp on and the bottom of the aquarium was right where my face was. And I was like, nope, take me out, take me out right now. And I had to like sort of learn to control my breathing and, and the patter had to pull my boots out and I, I was I was like, nope, that's, I'm good. That's, uh, yeah, I have claustrophobia now, who knew? The next time we went was I came without Sean and I came with my own team where we got to actually replace some of the aquariums, update them and move the old ones out and we brought the new ones in. Hey, we just pulled over. We got hit by somebody. Smash the back, smash the light. But the aquarium's still in one piece. 
Now we got to use something called a spider crane for the first time. And I thought, I, we rented it, called them up. This was the only way that we knew we were gonna be able to bring it in. They wouldn't let a full size forklift in uh, to move these giant uh, aquariums. One of them was over three meters long. This is a huge blanding turtle aquarium. And uh, we had a stainless steel base custom made and we had the glass already done. And then we we used the spider crane and they just dropped it off in the parking lot as if I knew how to use this thing. I couldn't even figure out how to turn it on for 10 minutes because it was so foreign to me. Once I got it up there and we got using it, good lord was this thing a lifesaver. One of my favorite pieces of equipment that I've ever come across and I've gotten to use it on multiple projects ever since. And probably my favorite a uh, piece of equipment that I've ever gotten to use and honestly I don't see how even with a forklift we would have ever been able to build this piece. So when we built that we got to install I think five new aquariums and then we got to do a couple updates. My third time coming up there was actually when, sadly, the skunk had passed away. Her name was Rose, she was so friendly. She was such a, a unique part of the space. But the good news was, is that it allowed Maple, the porcupine, to actually double its space. And we didn't want to rip down the entire giant wall. They wanted to actually have the ability for, the, for Maple to roam and to find a new space and obviously close it off if they ever need to do maintenance on one side or the other. So what we did was we actually bore and cut a hole right through the wall, created a, a live edge log crawl through and a cave over on the one side with a couple more tree stands. Okay, we got our crawl through log now. Bark edge. Flip it. That was so much fun that we got to create and adapt a, a space that had been done in 2010 all the way in 2022. Uh, and of course, Maple had a great time exploring and challenging and creating, figuring out that they can climb significantly better even over steep rocks with an overhang than we ever thought imaginable. I think we had to do two adjustments uh, before we were able to actually keep Maple in this open habitat. It was really interesting to go back and visit and see everybody and talk to the staff. They welcomed us back with open arms. I brought my family. They were welcomed, the next generation. They were so great with the kids. They took us through the Butterfly Conservatory. Even after all this time, they're showing us everything that Science Center had to offer. It was truly special and uh, I can't wait to go back on my next trip up to the cottage. I will definitely be bringing the kids back. Science North is always about accessibility to our Science Center. We want to make sure that everybody who comes to Science North can and come and explore science in the hands-on way that we know how to deliver it. And so we have something called our Science for All Fund. And this Science for All Fund allows people from anywhere to come and explore science right here at Science North at no cost to them. So if visiting the Science Center is outside of your reach, then that's what the Science for All Fund does. And it's, we also ask people to support this really important cause. And so if you're looking to support our amazing Science Center and getting people involved in hands-on science, then check out our Science for All Fund. So if you're ever in Sudbury, make sure that you do not miss out on Science North. Go in, see the exhibits, catch all the things that they have to offer. 
Right from the beginning, when you're going in through the entrance, the kids were going insane, and they've upgraded their lighting so that it plays little music and lighting shows as you walk through. It's such a neat effect to go through that cave and then come out on the other side, and that's one of the things that makes Science North Science North. It was built and engineered right into the rock side. The little thing about Sudbury is that, you know, when my mom was a kid they, and they grew up up north, they would actually have to come down to Sudbury just for things like orthodontics. And back then, there was film studios actually doing space films because it looked like it was on the moon. Uh, there was not a lot of greenery and vegetation and the community and the work like what Science North does, the people brought that vegetation in. Now it is lush and green, works with the rock, like everything that we love to do, which is add layers and layers and layers, and that's where the beauty comes from. That is a big part of how Science North came to be and how the building is formed around this rock and how we built around that. What I love about Science North in general is their involvement in the scientific community as a whole. They don't just bring the kids into their space, they actively go out there, they conserve nature, they're always educating. They even help other locations um, with their exhibitry. So one of those coming up, I do believe, is the Cochrane Polar Bear Habitat, which will be a following video. If you want to see more content like this, make sure you like and subscribe, of course, that really helps us out and I can't wait to show you the next video. That's all we have for you, that wonderful trip down memory lane. On to the next. This whole project was completed with a team of four, and one of those members was Preston Parrish, and he has since passed away. So we want to dedicate this project in this video to him and all the hard work that he completed with us as a team member of Rockscapes of Canada.